Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience, working Monday to Friday primarily in the financial services sector. I'm five times AWS certified and like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. Carrying on with the beginner's guide series, we're gonna look at DMS. This is actually a topic that a couple of you guys have requested in the comments section. So I'll reach out to you and get your feedback for it as well. So what is DMS? DMS stands for the Database Migration Service. It's an AWS offering that helps us move data from point A to point B through a migration. So for example, let's say we're new to the cloud and we have an on-premise data center and we want to take advantage of AWS Aurora. We need to get the data from the on-premise data center to AWS and that's where DMS comes in. Let's say our on-premise data center is Oracle and we want to go to MySQL Aurora. Well, normally we'd have to plan a migration, we'd have to get a project in gear, we'd have to write out all the SQL, all the statements, all the schemas, all the data, and then plan how we're gonna map A to B. And that can take a very long time and be very costly. AWS DMS removes this. It uses a replication instance that sits in the middle, and all you have to do is set up your source and your destination, and you can map between it. And if that doesn't work out of the box, you also have the option of the schema conversion tool or SCT. This is a tool that helps us convert from one schema type to another. So for example, from Oracle to MySQL. It's not flawless, but it definitely lowers the overhead compared to having to do everything manually. DMS can run as a one-off migration where we're moving from on-premise to the cloud, or indeed you can move cloud to cloud if you really want to. So we're moving on-premise to cloud in my example. Or alternatively, you might have a data warehouse running out in the cloud and you might have an on-premise transactional database for latency reasons and you want to constantly push the updates from the on-premise to DMS. That's also possible where you have an ongoing change. The replication instance actually scans the logs for change. So that's the one thing you have to have enabled is the logs. So detailed logging has to be turned on in your source database and there's different configurations depending on what you're using. And the second thing is that every row must have a primary key. Because it needs to perform updates, inserts and deletes, it needs to have a reference point between the two tables and this is a primary key. So all your data at source must have a primary key attached before you start DMS or else it won't work. Okay, but why use DMS? Well, I already hinted at it. It used to be a massive pain to do a data migration. It can cost millions of pounds, get very complex, and ultimately something always goes wrong. DMS kind of lowers this barrier to entry slightly and makes things a bit less complex and more simple. If you're doing a really straightforward migration, it's painless. More complex things like stored procedures can take a bit of time, but at least this way you're up and running quicker in the cloud rather than planning a year or two years in advance to try and move your data between on-premise and back up the AWS. But when use DMS? Well, we've already hinted at it. The first one's when you're doing a migration. Moving to the cloud, DMS is the obvious option. Lower barrier to entry, lower costs, simpler the project, more cloud adoption, quicker. And the second use case I've already touched upon where you want to replicate between on-premise and the cloud ongoing. So for example, again, you might have an on-premise database for low latency reasons, and you want to just get that up to the cloud to take advantage of some of the BI and analytical processes. DMS is great for that, where you can just do a replication that's ongoing after the one-time load. DMS will cost some money because I need to set up a couple of databases and do things in between. It's going to cost me about 10 to $20. So you can follow along or you can just watch. It's up to you. But join me on the console and we'll get going. Okay, guys, that's me logged into the console. First thing I'm going to do is configure an RDS instance to act as my source. If you have your source um, already configured, then jump ahead in the video um, to where I start to work with DMS itself. If not, you can follow along and set up a source with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to RDS by typing in RDS and clicking. Once on RDS, we're going to click Create Database. We're going to do a standard create. We're going to create an Aurora instance. We want it to be the PostgreSQL compatibility. We're going to use provisioned. We're going to do dev stroke test. I want to call this music. Postgres. Then you need to remember an admin password. So pick one of your choice, but it has to be at least eight printable ASCII characters. DB class instance. Go to burstable classes and then pick the T3 medium so we can keep this kind of reasonably cheap in cost. We don't want to replicate. Pick your default VPC 
say that you wanted the default security group, make it publicly accessible. Create a new VPC security group and give it a name. Test DMS. It's really important to give it a new security group. And make sure also you have it publicly accessible or else we won't be able to log in without a whole load of Bastion hosts going through an EC2. So we're just going to keep it simple. It's slightly less secure, but for the purposes of this demo, it's absolutely fine. After that, let's create the database. Okay, that's the database often creating. This will take about 10 minutes usually. While that's happening, if you look into the description below, there's a link to PG admin download. So this is the client that we're going to use to log into the database. If you're not really familiar with databases, don't worry. All you need to do is install and I'm going to show you the steps as we go. If you are familiar, then this is just another client that's going to let us interact with the database that we're setting up in the RDS console as we speak. So find the version um, that suits your, your machine. I'm on Mac OS. I already have it installed, but if not, I would have clicked this. If you're on Windows, you click this. After that, just click through, um, accept everything, and then we can pick it back up once this instance is created. Okay, that took about 15 minutes in total, so it's a bit of a slow process, but eventually both of the statuses will go available. The top one for music on regional rule will go available first, but you need to wait until that writer rule is, is also green and available here, and you only see that by constantly clicking that refresh button. So let's click into the music instance. And down here, you will see security groups. So let's click on the test DMS security group. And we want to edit this inbound rule. So let's have a look at inbound rules. And let's edit that inbound rule. And currently it's custom, but what we want is anywhere. And we want to save. So we're basically, what we're going to allow here, I won't go into too much detail, obviously, because it's not part of this actual course um, today we just want to do DMS but it's interesting to know that basically I'm saying just let any internet into the PostgreSQL database that I've set up provided they have the username and password um, not the most secure um, use of, of a security group but it saves the hassle um, because we're all on different machines just delete um, the instance if you're following along once done save the rules and that's it saved. So you should also now have PG Admin downloaded. Go ahead and start that up. It will come up into your browser. Okay, that's PG Admin up in my browser, as you can see. If we go over to the left-hand side here on servers and we hit create, and we want to create a new server. I want to give it the name music. Music, you want to go to connection. Next thing we want is in the address. So it's back on the RDS instance. So I'm just going to hit back a couple of times, not changing that security group as we go and we're back on the RDS instance. You wanna click on the writer, so that's really important. Click on the writer, and you wanna copy this endpoint down here, back on to the console, and paste. Okay, everything else is already default, and that's fine, because we didn't change anything, but you need to type in the password that you gave your user. So that's everything then, if we save, and as you can see, we've logged in successfully on the left-hand side. Next thing we want to do is right hand click databases and hit create database. And we want to call this you guessed it music. So we've now created a music database on that RDS instance. And then inside music, we don't have anything yet inside tables as you can see. So click on music and click on this query tool up here on the right hand side. So it's the database with a play. And you can see that we're inside music. Okay, so it's music forward slash Postgres at music. So we're inside music and music. That's really important. Then at the bottom in the description, I've also left a link to my GitHub. Inside the GitHub, there's a create tables SQL file. Just copy and paste it. It's not that long, it's only 16 lines. So just copy and paste it in to that window of the query editor. And then we want to run that query by hitting the play up on the top right bar here. You can see it was successfully ran. Now, if we refresh the schemas, so go to the schemas, right hand click and click refresh. We should have a table and that table is called artist. If we click on tables and we click on that play button again and you type in select star from artist and again you hit that play button you can see that we've ended up with three artists in so that's our table we're going to use from source. That's the last thing we'll have to look at um, PostgreSQL for today. It was just a simple way to get a source set up. So join me back on the console where we'll actually start using DMS. Now we get to DMS by typing DMS at the top and then just clicking on the link that appears and you arrive on DMS. So the first thing we want to do is create a replication instance. This is usually free if it's your first time. If not, I'm going to choose a pretty small instance so it won't have that much of an effect. I'm going to call this music demo. Um, hopefully so I remember to delete it later. 
Uh, friendly ARM, we don't need. Description, I'm going to leave blank for now. We want to just use that built-in one. VPC, put it inside the default VPC. Publicly accessible, make sure that it's clicked because we're going to need that. Apart from that, if we click on advanced network and security, just make sure it's all okay here. And then I'm going to use the default security group, so just leave it on default and click create. That's the replication instance often creating. While that's being created, click on endpoint. So we need an endpoint. We're going to have a, a source endpoint and a target endpoint. So if you click into endpoints, you'll see that there's a source endpoint and a target endpoint. I'm going to use the RDS instance that I set up to start this video. If you're using a different source endpoint, then feel free to enter your own credentials. So we're going to click um, select RDS instance. We want the music instance. Um, we don't want a friendly ARM. We're good. We want to provide the access information manually. And then we need to type in that password that you gave your instance. Database name is the database name that you gave it. So we kept everything simple and just called it music. Type in music. We don't need to do anything else here. Can test the connection, but the replication instance needs to be up and it's still spinning up in the background. So for now, let's just create that endpoint. And once our replication instance is ready, we will actually use that endpoint to test. However, as you can still see, it's creating at the moment. So we'll go create our destination or our target endpoint. So we'll go create endpoint this time. We're going to go target endpoint. We're going to call this uh, music dynamo because I'm going to use dynamo DB as my target dynamo. Target engine is dynamo DB. So dynamo, Amazon dynamo DB, fantastic. A role that can access the target. So this is really important. We need to give DMS a role that can get to the target. So at the top, let's go to IAM. And I'm just going to open this up in a separate tab. Let's create a rule. Let's create a rule. Let's go to DMS, which is right there. DMS. Click on DMS. Next permissions. I'm going to cheat as always in this video and give it full admin permissions. You need to give it a full DynamoDB permissions and VPC if you want to make it more secure. But for quickness, full administrator access. Next tags. Don't need to do anything there. Name. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, DMS delete. Dynamo, 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 create that rule. Perfect. Let's just check it's there. Dan uh, oh, let me click in. DMS, delete Dynamo right there. So click onto it and then click the ARN at the top as a copy and then paste the ARN into the box. So I am, create the rule, paste the ARN in and create that endpoint. That's that endpoint then created. If we go back up the replication instances, we can now see it's available. That means in endpoints, we can actually check that it's ready to go. So use your replication instance, it sits in the middle, and then we have a source endpoint, which is the music instance one, and we have a target endpoint, which is the DynamoDB. So let's go into this one, and let's go to connections, and you can see that nothing's working yet. We can go to run test. This takes about five to 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up once we're back. Don't be frightened if it takes a long time. As I said, when you run these connection tests for the first time, it's five to 10 minutes every time. Okay, um, having said it was five to 10 minutes, that one took literally two minutes. That was the quickest that it has ever took me to test an endpoint. So thankfully it's went to successful, which means we could connect in to the RDS instance that I set up earlier as my source. And if I just go back in the endpoints, you can see that I have my target. So if my source, my target, and a replication instance, I have the compute power that's gonna do the replication. Now I need to tie this all together, which is done through a data migration task. So let's click on that and let's click on create task. Give your task an identifier. So I'm just going to call this demo because it's easy for me. Choose your replication instance. It's going to be the VPC. Choose your source database. So I've only got one. It's the music instance. Choose your target, which is the DynamoDB. We want to migrate existing data only. This is how you would go ongoing changes. And this is how you would do changes only. So one time load is what I'm doing. We're going to do wizard. We're going to drop the target tables. If, if there were any, there, there aren't. We're going to leave it on the wizard for the table mappings here. You need to do at least one selection rule. So I'm going to allow everything. So on schema, click on enter a schema. Leave everything else as a wild card. So we're just going to lift that one table that we created. So enter schema on default. Then just leave all the wild cards in because we want to select everything. And then after that, everything else is fine. Automatically 
allocate on run and create that task. That task is now creating. Once it's created, it will start to run automatically. So this can take about five to 10 minutes. So just sit back, make yourself a cup of tea. I'm gonna pause the video here and then we can pick it up once it's done its thing. Okay, so I quickly unpaused the video there and you can see that it's gone from demo created successfully to start in progress. So I didn't have to click any buttons there. It just starts off automatically. So I'm gonna pause the video again and then we can pick it up once it's done. I took about three or four minutes in total. And as you can see, the load's been complete. The progress is 100% and the load is full. So then let's never get to Dynamo and make sure that our rows and tables have actually arrived. So Dynamo DB, Dynamo DB, tables. And you can see that our artist table has arrived. Click on items and you can see that our three rows have arrived that were present in our database to begin with. So that's everything for today, guys. As you can see, actually setting up your source and targets for replication at the beginning is more complex than DMS itself. It's a really great service to do those migration patterns that were a real headache um, before, before such a thing existed. So that being said, I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make everything for free as usual on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.